When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, that is, after that millennial reign, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Matthew 25, 31-46 The sheep and goats judgment agrees with this sequence entirely. Verse 31 encompasses the final events of human history from the second advent, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, to the last judgment, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory, with the throne referring to the throne of judgment, whereon our Lord Jesus will render a final evaluation of reward for all remaining believers, the sheep, and of judgment for all unbelievers, the goats. The phrase, and when all the angels are with him, is an additional indication that the judgment upon which this description focuses is post-millennial, as there are no indications from elsewhere in Scripture that the angels will play a visible role in Christ's millennial kingdom. Further, the fact that all the angels are present implies that the fallen angels have now been removed from the scene an event which takes place at the millennium's close. In this description, too, there is a separation of the righteous and the wicked, with the righteous receiving their evaluation first, and the wicked last, which evaluation is followed by their sequestration into the lake of fire. Finally, here, too, we see believers enjoying eternity at the end of the process, in contrast to the prior damnation experienced by unbelievers. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. As suggested under Step 1, this process of rewarding the millennial believers and judging all unbelievers requires the prior resurrection of all remaining non-resurrected human beings, that is, the final phase of the resurrection unto life on the one hand and the joint resurrection of all the unsaved dead on the other. This resurrection is in fact the very last earthly event of human history and a point equally important to emphasize, since it underlines the reality of the eternal consequences of our choices in this life, and the eternal divergence between the two essential elements of the human race established upon these choices, namely eternal life for all who respond to our Lord Jesus, and the second death for all who refuse the grace of God. For many who sleep in the dust will awake, some to eternal life but the others to shame and eternal separation from God. Then those who have insight will shine like the shining forth of the dawn, even those who led the many to righteousness, like stars forever and ever. Daniel 12, 2 and 3 Just as the Father raises the dead and brings them to life, so the Son brings to life whomever He wishes. And neither does the Father judge anyone, but He has given all judgment to the Son, in order that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him, Truly, truly, I say to you, that the one who hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and does not enter into judgment, but has passed from death into life.
Truly, truly, I say to you that an hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will come to life. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself. And he has given authority to him to render judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this statement, that an hour will come in which all those in their tombs will hear his voice. For they shall come forth, those who have done what is good to a resurrection of life, that is, those who have faithfully followed Jesus Christ, but those who have done what is worthless to a resurrection of judgment. John 5, 21 through 29 And I have the same hope in God as these men, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Acts 24, 15 The destruction of the present heavens and earth. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. Psalm 102, 26 Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will quake from its place on account of the anger of the Lord, and on the day of his fierce wrath. Isaiah 13, 13 All the stars of the heavens will be dissolved, and the sky rolled up like a scroll. All the starry host will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like shriveled figs from the fig tree. Isaiah 34, 4 Lift up your eyes to the heavens, look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever, my righteousness will never fail. Isaiah 51, 6 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Matthew 24, 35 See to it that you do not ignore the one who is speaking to you. For if those of the Exodus generation did not escape, when they ignored the one who was giving them warning from the earth, that is, Moses, how much more shall we not escape, if we turn away from the one giving us warning from heaven? His voice shook the earth at that time at Mount Sinai, but now he has made us this promise, saying, Yet once more shall I shake not only the earth, but also heaven, Haggai 2.6. And this once more clearly indicates the coming transformation of things which may be shaken as things which have been made by him, so that the coming things which cannot be shaken may abide forever. Since therefore we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude so that through it we may serve God in a pleasing way with reverence and fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12:25 through 29 and the heaven retreated like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and hill was moved from its place. Revelation 6.14 And I saw a throne, a great white one, and him who was sitting upon it, that is, Jesus Christ. From his presence the earth and the heavens fled, and no place was found for them. Revelation 20.11 As these passages show, the removal of the present cosmos is an essential prerequisite for the commencement of eternity, and precedes the creation of the new heavens and new earth, which will be the home of all believers and elect angels forevermore. The reason for their removal is the necessity to remove every taint of sin and unrighteousness, and as befits such a judgment, the precise manner of their removal will be a fiery destruction.